Another enhancement to this release is the Civil Feature Remapper. This utility can be used to remap style and feature definitions from one standard to another. It has many uses. We can remap from standards in our older versions such as SS2, SS4, and SS10 forward to OpenRose Designer Connect. You can also remap from one Connect workspace to another. It can also be used for cleanup purposes, which we'll see here in just a moment. Now in this release, it will only work with ITL and IRD files. We'll be expanding support in future releases for DGNs and DGN Libs. Specifically in this release, we're talking about remapping ITL and IRD files. So we'll work with these two pieces of data today that came from Inroads SS2. You'll find the remapper utility on the backstage under Civil Tools, Civil Feature Remapper. And the way this works, we set up what we call a configuration file. This is a reusable configuration that defines a mapping structure. That mapping structure is dependent on a remapping definition file. So I will create a new file as well. Now this definition file is an Excel spreadsheet that defines how to remap data. I can pre-populate that spreadsheet with existing data from an ITL or an IRD file, which I'll do here from our existing ITL file. We'll open up that spreadsheet by clicking this button, and here's our spreadsheet. This spreadsheet's been pre-populated with the styles or the definitions that existed in the original ITL file. There's two sets of information that we're going to be looking at in this file or defining. The first two tabs deal with points. The second two tabs deal with components. And these are processed in a sequential manner. So it's going to process the first tab first for the points and then the second tab. So what's the difference and what are we doing here? Well, this first tab defines the features that were, or styles that were used on those points. So in this existing file, these are the different styles that appeared in there on all the different points that existed. So I could come in here and say, well, I want to take anything that was using this existing style P Kogo main centerline, and I want to remap that to a new style called TL centerline. And I can go through and define all of those and define those remappings. Once we've done that, and, and it'll go through and process the file, and it would replace any of those in the ITL or IRD file, then it's going to make a second pass on each point, and it's going to see if there's an additional override. So this second tab, what it's listing, are all the individual point names and then in the qualifier column, the orange column, you can see their associated styles. So let's focus for a minute on these three centerline points that exist at the top, at the bottom of the asphalt, and then at the bottom of the aggregate. In our current ITL, two of those three are using the PCOGO main centerline style, and one, notice, was didn't even have a style associated with it. So this definition allows us to go in and correct some of those errors we may have had in our existing data and or override some of it. So the first thing I'll do is let's correct this error and say, well, this point, even though it didn't used to have a style, really should have a style to it. So let's go in there and define that also to go into pavement center line. But my standards are a little more refined now. I just don't want to go to centerline. I actually want to go to centerline one at the bottom of my asphalt. Now, likewise, this aggregate point, I would really don't want to just go to TL centerline, which it's going to do natively because of the definition we created on the first tab here. We're going to replace all of these features with this one. But we want to now override that and say, except for this point name, I really want that one to go to centerline two. Now there's a little bit to understand here because remember this is a sequential processing. So once this first tab processes, this point will no longer have this style name to it. So what I'm gonna do is change that to a wild card. So I'm gonna tell it this point name, don't care what the point style is, change it to this. This point name that had a blank point style, change it to this. We would do the same thing for our component definitions, map those and any overrides to those component definitions. 
Now to save a little time here, I've got another file completely filled out already. So here we can see our point feature names are all populated. Our point name overrides, I've got a few defined in there. Our component are all override, or all of the feature definitions are defined and I do not have any overrides for the components. So let's go back now and process this. So back to creating our configuration name, I'm gonna switch this over and tell it to use my completed mapping definition file. Now we go in here and we turn on which components of that we want it to use, and we can also define some mapping to which tabs in the spreadsheet to use. So if you did happen to create your spreadsheet and had different tab names here, you can overwrite that. Um, if they match our default names, we will automatically match these up for you. I will give it a name of the configuration that I want to create, and I'll go ahead and create that. So I can run this now, and I could do a remapping of my ITL file. It processes it very quickly, gives you a log file showing you what it's done, and I could now go in and take a look at what's happened with that remapped file. So let's take a look at our template library. I will open up the original template library here which has a .bak extension on it. And I'll just look at this first template. Now you might notice this template has pretty much no color to it. If I clicked on any of these points, I'm gonna get an error because it's still mapping back to standards that don't exist here. Let's go ahead and open up our new remapped file. We'll look at that same template. And you'll see that it's now picking up colors on our side slopes. Our asphalt is black. If I pick on a point, it is mapped to the proper feature definitions. So you're ready to use this file. I could go back and reuse my mapper again to map additional data. So I'll come back to the remapper, pick that same configuration file and just run it again. This time I wanna bring in my IRD file that's using the same remapping process and that quickly, I've remapped both the template library and our IRD file, which I could then import into OpenRoads Designer and proceed with my work.